Welcome to Trojans Live, the exclusive USC Trojans Coaches Show. From the four-yard line, and Branch slowly working up the field. That turns on the Jets, looking for a block at the 50 and gets it. Down the sideline to the 40, 30, cuts it back in at the 20. He's going to go all the way. 96 yards. Zachariah Branch, how do you do? With behind-the-scenes insights and breaking news from the student-athletes who play for the Cardinal in gold. Looks left, looks over the middle, throws it, intercepted! Intercepted! Corey Foreman with the pick over the middle, and the Croakers are gonna win! Trojans Live is presented by Monster Energy. Unleash the base! Now, live from Los Angeles, here are your hosts, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Max Brown. Hello and welcome to Trojans Live, presented by Monster Energy on AM 790 KBC and across the USC Trojans Media Network. We welcome our YouTube audience here live inside Heritage Hall. I am Jordan Moore alongside Sean Cody, our All-American, our quarterback, Max Brown. Uh, Interesting game, USC, Arizona State, plenty to talk about with the head coach, Lincoln Riley, who joins us momentarily. USC's head coach interview is presented by iTrust Capital, the official crypto platform of the USC Trojans. Welcome, sh- uh, welcome, Coach. Uh, yeah, after watching the film, curious, you, you feel better, worse? What did you? What did? You, what were your sort of new takeaways after after uh, looking at that game a bunch of times? I'm sure. It was, a, it was about what we thought. Um, I was really pleased with the way we finished. You know, going back and, and look at it, some of the best ball. Really, on all three sides was was kind of the, that last sequence there at the at the end of the game, and so I thought that was very positive to see. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we were we were pretty clean in the run game most of the night. We had one assignment bust on the first touchdown, um, and other than that, we were pretty clean. We we didn't when we wrapped up, we tackled great. When we didn't wrap <laughs> up, we were about fifty fifty, which is called football. And uh, and and so, yeah, just too many too many shoulders, too many guys diving at legs. Um, our fundamentals um, at times certainly weren't there, and, and they made us pay a few times for that. Um, yeah, and then offensively, yeah, about what we said. I mean, probably about as about as disappointed as you could be, averaging nine yards a play in a football <laughs> game. So you know, I mean, we both sides did a lot of really good things. I mean, it's like I told the guys this morning. I mean, you had defensively you had eight sacks and fourteen tackles for loss and three turnovers. Um, and offensively, average nine yards a snap. So it's like, like the the sky's not falling. Like we're okay, um, but the mistakes are there, and they're very correctable. And we need to get them fixed now. Coach, after a game like that, obviously the most important thing you get the win. But what what was the mood from the team, and what, what did you kind of want to feel from them on a Monday or a Sunday after the game? After you know, like you said, you get that win, but still some meat on the bone. Yeah, I think the mood was. I mean, I think they were they were excited about the win, um, but I think certainly understood that there's a lot of things that we got to correct and then it's on to the next one mm-hmm. um the, the world has no appreciation for games like that yeah. like that's that and and that's it's it shows the it shows the the it's it's not anything wrong it just shows the ignorance of the outside when you haven't been in those locker rooms in those moments man like it's you know to think that Arizona State is going to play uh us like they do, like they do uh, you know Fresno no disrespect to Fresno but like that that's that's not how it works yeah. like it's not the crowd's going to be better the team's going to be better like everything's going to be you're going to get everybody's absolute best shot and you know and so first for our guys it's making sure that they appreciate the win the fight that it took and that we do not in any way, shape, or form let that win get discounted because no. they don't discount them at the end of the year. No. At the end of the year last year, nobody gave a damn how many we had won. It was, no, you win this last game, you go to the playoff, and you lift a trophy. Yeah. So first is making sure everybody understands uh, that that counts the same as all the other wins. And then second is, what are the areas that we have to fix? What is the plan going forward to get that done? And then our guys in a very intentional mindset and going attacking – those different areas so we laid them out we had our humble pie meeting like we do after every game win or lose uh they saw the good they saw the bad they know the plan to go attack the things that needs to get better and we're gonna put that plan in place this week and go get it because all the wins count the same is there part of you that now that you're able to sit here on a monday and you got the win that you're glad your team had that challenge and it wasn't just another blowout so you're able to see maybe how your guys come together and this unit come together and 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 get tested in a way that you wouldn't have had if you didn't have that experience against against Arizona State I I think that's fair to say I I think you know our first three games have all 
there's been quite a bit of separation. And for us to get in a new circumstance, not only on the road, but just with how the, the game unfolded, we, we weren't ever behind. But for us to get in a new circumstance where the game was close and there were some periods where we made mistakes and did not play our best and have to respond to that together, Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just kind of how the season's unfolded up to this point. And so to be able to, to get some of that experience and feel some of those emotions and have to really kind of pull together to get it done, I, I think was healthy. And I think after the game, I think our guys recognized that. Like they knew we could, could have played better, but I think they recognized like this is kind of the first real challenge, um, uh, you know, the kind of four quarter challenge that we've had. And it, and it felt good to kind of be in those moments and have to pull together and get it done. You're listening to the head coach, Lincoln Riley, on Trojans Live. And coach, a lot of guys stepped up uh, and made some plays in the second half on defense, uh, especially when you needed them to. I want to talk about Solomon Bird. In this transfer portal era, it, it has to be harder on you guys to develop players because you simply don't know how long you'll have a guy, and oftentimes it is a shorter window than it, than it used to be. From one year to the next, though, something's going on with Solomon that, 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 that certainly a bunch of people, I'm sure, deserve credit for. How has he been able to improve so much from one year to the next? He, he's among the nation's leaders in sacks and tackles for loss. Yeah, he's been, he's been tremendous. He, he's been you know, certainly one of the keys uh, up to this point for, for our entire football team. And, yeah, I mean, Solomon himself deserves a lot of credit for the, the transformation physically. Uh, Coach Wiley in the weight room, uh, you know, Rachel and nutrition, obviously our medical staff did a great job getting him back after the injury uh, this offseason. Uh, all of those groups deserve a lot of credit because he really has. He, he's a just totally different player. Uh, he, he has maximized his time. He is stronger. He's faster. He's leaner. He's more explosive. Like everything about him physically is there was a pretty significant jump from year one to year two. And so it's been cool to see an older guy like that really develop. And now he's, you know, with that, he's gaining confidence and he's able to do some things that he wasn't just even physically capable of doing last year. And so you see the confidence coming along with that. And it's, it's been fun to watch it unfold. Coach, uh, your quarterback, you know, he had some magical plays out there again. Once again, you know, you know, just extending plays and the one in the end zone. I can remember where, you know, he finds uh, the wide receiver late. Uh, what, what was your take on Caleb's play? Looked like he might have missed some throws maybe for the first time this year. Where you're like, ah, maybe that wasn't the best selection of pass right there. But what, what was your overall uh, take on the quarterback? Yeah, he, he made some big plays. Uh, obviously made made a lot of plays for us. Um, had a good, a couple good aggressive runs. Um, Missed a couple of deep balls, um, you know, that, that we overthrew. That we obviously had some things there that we'd we'd love to get back, and we've been doing a great job of giving our guys chances, and we got to keep doing that. Um, and then had a he had one or two decisions in, in scramble situations where he's normally you know really rock solid um, that that we'd certainly like to have back too. So, yeah, it's still a, a lot of positives, but it kind of like the rest of the team. I mean, really. Other, I thought the old line, especially in the run game, was good. We had a couple ugly things in pass pro. The D line was pretty good the majority of the night, but kind of everybody else was. There was definitely more good than bad, but mm -hmm. there was a lot to fix. And I would put Caleb in that same in that same category. When you look around college football and a game like that happens where a heavy favorite, it's a closer game than you, than you would have thought, you see coaches kind of go one of two ways. One, it's a, it becomes a let me chew my guys out fast on the sideline and they're getting going. And then the other side is what I saw from you and your staff and the players just where it's calm and you're trusting the process. How do you navigate that when your team – might need to get yelled at and wake up versus, hey, let's just trust what we're doing and let's stay calm and, and just trust our process. I think it's a feel for your team. Um, you know, halftime of uh, San Jose was a, a different story. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I felt like we needed a wake-up call. Like, we, we, were, we were, like, asleep at the wheel, man. I mean, we, we, we were in a different zone there, and then we, and we obviously picked it up and, and responded to the second half of that game. This, was, this one was not like that. We weren't I, – I did not sense any, um, like, intent to play. Um, you know, I, I thought at times we lost focus a little bit. I thought at times we, we pressed a little bit when a few things didn't go our way, but I never sensed that, like, our guys were not into it. So there never really was that. Even coming into halftime, like, our guys were energetic. They were into it. They knew we had missed some opportunities to separate. But yeah, I never felt I never felt that sense where, like, our guys need that. It's not just we, we – this is a little different test, and we got to bind together. And we got to really – when you get in those moments, do you trust it or do you veer away from it? At times we veered away from it, and that's when we got in trouble. You've got to really trust all that you've built up to that point in those moments, and it's hard to do it. You guys have been in those moments. Like sometimes it's hard, 
as much as you practice it and do all that, like you get in those moments and it's it, things tighten up and it's like, all right, I'm out here in front of the whole world and everybody's going to see me fail or succeed. And, and you know, it, it's, it's a good lesson even, and that's not always just the freshmen or the guys that are inexperienced. Sometimes that's guys that have been in a lot of those battles too. And that's one of the great challenges in this game. And so it was trying to keep our guys in that mindset or if they weren't there, get them back to that as fast as we could. Uh, Dennis Lynch, coach, uh, for a while in that game, that 53-yard kick was a huge moment. It could have flipped momentum. If he doesn't make it, he does make it. Those points were important. I'm curious how you go about the process of evaluating kickers. I don't know if you have any kicking expertise in your background, but but do you just really look at the numbers and practice and how those guys play out? Do you look at the makeup of a kid because you know that there's a pressure aspect to that job? How have you gone about that in your career? Yeah, no, it's a listen, it's uh it's not an easy job, right? It's it's one that if you haven't spent a lot of time in that area, um, that that it can be a little bit foreign to you. And uh so yeah, I I I did a little bit um in high school, did a little bit of punting, so I I probably have a little bit more um a little bit more feel in, in kind of the punting world. Um we certainly rely on several of our other coaches that have had had experience coordinating special teams units, working with the the punters and kickers, and of course, you know Ryan Doherty, our special t- teams analyst, gives is able to give our staff a lot of insight in there because of his history of being an NFL punter, and and uh, he's very knowledgeable in that way. So yeah, we've got a staff full of guys that 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 I feel very comfortable that's able to evaluate. We're able to set up these competitions. We're able to stat these guys out. I mean. We track these guys just like we do any other player out there. We get a lot of data back on them. And Dennis has been consistent really since the day I walked in the door. And now his confidence is really starting to grow Not just, and, and being able to take what he does from the practice field to the game field. And I think that's been the, the biggest, um, I think maybe the biggest change in year two. And Dennis kicked well for us last year, but he's, I feel like a lot more confident. And then having Jack, uh, having Will Rose, uh, both those guys back as a part of that operation, I think gives him a lot of confidence as well. And by the way, uh, we, we put Dennis on uh, on scholarship today in the team oh, meeting, oh, right. yeah, that? Yeah, which, was, which was a, a cool moment. The team just erupted, so it was it was awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Great timing for that. The, the third longest kick in, in school history, so uh, no small feat there by Dennis Lynch. Monster Energy is the official energy drink of USC. Unleash the Beast. When we come back, we will break down this big game against Colorado this week. Coming up, uh, the game will be at Fox. Remember, it's an early one. We'll get into that, too. Our show's going to go on at 7 a.m. Pacific time, so get up. Coffee. A little breakfast in Boulder with uh, Sean. Uh, another segment with Coach coming up on Trojans Live.
They apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment. Looking for the play of the day? That's easy. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT, the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention, Ontario International Airport has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 20 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. It's like getting a degree in Trojan Athletics without the tuition. It, 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 it's Trojans Live on your home for Trojans football. AM 790 KABC. Trojans Live is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. And hey, Trojan fans, did you know the Ralph's app gives you easy access to weekly sales and personalized coupons and you can earn fuel points too? Check out the app today and save while you cheer us on to another great season. Ralph's proud partner of USC Athletics, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Max Brown, and the head coach Lincoln Riley back for another segment. Uh, getting set for this exciting game this weekend. And, and, and the first big story is obviously the early kickoff. I, I mentioned it, it going into break. Correct me if I'm wrong, you, you do have experience with this, that Red River game usually kicks before noon right uh so in your experience what are the tips and tricks to to plan you know, a little bit earlier than usual it's actually awesome i mean you like you normally on a game day i don't know if everybody you know knows exactly what all happens but it's especially with all these 730 kicks and i hear we're gonna have three out of four but um <laughs> which is great um but uh you know you have all types of different meetings and walkthroughs yeah. and all these things going on and and it's nice after you've had a lot of those to just have one where literally you get up, like you eat and you go play. Yeah. And that's what this one will be like. And so, yeah, I think it's, I think it'll be a good change up for us. You, you make some uh, schedule adjustments throughout the week. Uh, you still got to get the same amount of things done, but you've got a little bit shorter window to get it done with. And that's a few adjustments for the staff, a, a few adjustments for the guys as we get a little bit closer to game time. And, and then you, uh, and then you go. And so we, we're used to it. We're, we're an early morning outfit, you know, a lot of the times. Our guys are up pretty early most days. Um, our first several days of fall camp, we had our not practice start, but the beginning of our team period, you know, was at 6.30 a.m. So, I mean, like, we're – we go play this one anywhere, anytime. <laughs> like, we, we, we honestly – we'll make the adjustments, but – when it's played, um, all that we really don't care a whole lot about. Coach, you had a player last week, Mason Cobb, who hadn't played since the first game, and then you know he comes back and, and gets a, a full load in, the, in against Arizona State. What was the game plan going in with it? Was it try to get him out there to get him as much reps as he could, or you're going to kind of feel it, and then you got into a game where you got to stay out there? What, what was the game plan with him going into it? Yeah, we wanted to see, obviously, kind of how he was feeling, and the hope was to be able to get him, you know, a, a decent share of the reps. And it, just the way that the game unfolded, we ended up not subbing quite as much as we as we planned on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he did a good job handling it physically. He was a little he was a little rusty at times, yep. like you would expect for missing missing a couple of weeks. But I thought thought by the end he started to settle in and play a little bit better. And I think Mason does a great job of. I mean, there's. Obviously, the, the the execution piece is important, but Mason is such a good communicator and is so locked in on what we're doing that when he's in the game, we tend to operate at a at a pretty high level just because those linebackers are so central to the entire mm -hmm. operation. So he he brings a lot of added value there, and and obviously it's a room we feel like we got a lot of great guys with. I mean that's as we said, obviously you know you know guys like Rajon and and Shane played really well in some of the other guys' absence, and and we still want to keep those guys very involved. Um, you know, Tackett played his best game. Mm -hmm. I mean, by far, he, he played. Tackett played well. Uh, Eric Gentry um, played pretty well. He had a couple of he had one key mistake on the fourth down, but like other than that, he he, he tackled. He had some really nice tackles. Um, made some really good plays for us as well. So, um, yeah, we're gonna just keep competing in that room and keep pushing them along. Coach, one of those, uh, one of the factors with having that earlier time slot on Saturday is just from a, an exposure standpoint. You're in prime time for the folks on the East Coast, and uh, I know for for West Coast football, maybe not for USC, because we have um, the, the the national brand recognition. But how wary of you are, are you of that factor, and how new is that maybe awareness from where you were before, where you didn't have to necessarily worry about time zones as much, uh, being in the middle of the country rather than out west. Yeah, I think you have to be conscious of it, right? It's uh, and listen, we're we're getting ready to, you know, this time next year, you know, the the, the, the segments are going to be a little bit different. So yeah, I mean, I think you're aware of it. We do have a lot of, 
you know, we have a lot of guys currently on the East Coast that are major players in this program right now. Um, we have a lot of future guys that will be coming in from the East Coast. And so I think an opportunity like this to play a quality program at, you know, on the given network that we're playing on and the time slot that it is all made great sense. And again, to us, it was, I think it's a new challenge and a great challenge and one that we'll be ready for. And, and so I think with all that, it, it fit, it fit fine for the team. Um, it fit great from an exposure standpoint. And so it was like, why not? Let's go. Colorado's obviously off to a, a great start this season. What do you see from the Buffs and a very talented passer in Shador, Shador Sanders? Yeah, yeah, he's he's playing really well. Um, you know, he, he's a he's a really good player. I think Bald knew that coming in. They've done a nice job uh, with their scheme. They've done a nice job surrounding him with some really good weapons. And he's a he's really just a, a terrific distributor. You know, and, and gets those those skill guys the ball, and they do it a lot of very efficient and creative ways. And so he's, yeah, he's largely played very, very well this season. Um, and yeah, and obviously some improvements drastic, you know, you got to give their staff a lot of credit you got to give all the different players that came in there a lot of credit. Um, we kind of know how that feels, right. <laughs> yep. And, and, you know, we're all smiling about it right now. So, you know, and they've undergone, you know, something that's a lot more similar than it is different. And so, uh, you got to give them credit and, uh, yeah, they've battled and obviously, you know, playing them, playing them at home and, and, and all that will be a great challenge and it uh, should be a lot of fun. Coach, you always expect the, at USC everyone's best punch, but what are some of the dangers when you're going against a team who, you know, just took one on the chin, right? They took a tough one and they had high expectations and now kind of a reset for them and getting ready for you guys. What are some of the dangers and they're going to a, and they got a home game coming. So what's the, what's the kind of dangers for that? Well, very similar to what we just walked into, yep. right? Again, everybody wants to write the book week after week and, you know, a lot, a lot of things change week to week. And so, uh, you know, listen, whether whether they won by a lot, lost by a lot, or anything in between, like, you know, we're going to see a, a good football team at their home. And those are, you know, those are always a challenge. I mean, that's just, I, I, I say it all the time. I told the guys this morning, like, road conference games are gold. You know, th those, those are... That's where it's at, man. Mm -hmm. Like that's you want to be a champion. That's where it's at. And so this is this is another one, and it's a it's a big challenge. And uh, I think probably good for us that we faced a little bit of the challenge to, to Max's point earlier that we we faced a little bit of the challenge that we did. And I think uh, I, I feel like we will be um, even more prepared going into this one. You mentioned there's more similarities and differences with how their roster is constructed. You're really the catalyst of showing how you could flip a roster over uh, upside down over one one offseason. Have you had coaches reach out to you for insight, for advice on how to handle the portal? Um, maybe not in the own conference, but throughout the throughout the country? There, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think you have, you know, whether it's formally reaching out or you see guys and it just kind of starts out as conversation. But sure, <laughs> I've, I've been asked about it uh, quite a bit, especially by, you know, several of the new coaches at places this year. Um, had a few reach out and want to talk about our experience and how and how it happened. And so uh, um, all the guys I like, I told the truth. All the ones I didn't, I lied. So, yeah. There you go. <laughs> all right, Coach. Uh, well, we've got an early one on Saturday. We're excited for it. USC versus Colorado. It will be at 9 a.m. Pacific time as kicks. Uh, it's 10 a.m. where we'll be locally in Boulder. So our show will go on at 7 a.m. The Trojan Tailgate Show will 7 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> Get ready. We'll get Sean all fired up, revved up, and, and ready to go. Uh, and then again, uh, 9 a.m. kick will be on Big Fox, too. So everyone will be able to watch, as they were just talking about. Everyone's been watching Jameel Muhammad so far this season. Talk about one of those transfers who's made an instant impact. He's next on Trojans Live.
up the band. Because Trojans Live is back exclusively on your home for Trojans football. AM 790 KABC. The best in the game is brought to you by Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. We've got Jamil Muhammad, who's been one of the best in the game for USC all season. Three sacks already flying off that edge. A ton of energy, intensity, been a great addition to this program. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Max Brown with Jamil now. And uh, J- Jamil, I mean, I guess the first question, we always ask the, the transfers, why USC? I mean, you're, you're a guy from Alabama. Your, your whole career was, was in the southeast. Uh, what brought you all the way out here? Um, just wanted to be great, honestly. Um, it was a lot of options I could have chose. Um, but obviously coming from Alabama, I knew that, um, I'm used to being uncomfortable. So I just think I thrive in those situations. So I think coming from that far or coming from that far away, being that far away from home, uh, would allow me to get into that, I guess, like discomfort zone where I could really like lock in and grind. I mean, obviously it was a lot of situations that went into it. I have a brother who, who lives down here, a blood brother. He's been down here for, I think, five years now. Um, on top of that, you got Caleb coming back. So that's a lot of eyes, not only on him, but the team as well. Um, a lot of returning guys that are special. We, I mean, I, I figured Coach Riley was going to um, get on the road and get some, you know, even bigger playmakers like Marshawn and uh, other guys. So it was just really a, a bigger picture. Um, it was from a big, bigger picture standpoint for me, not really just about myself, but um, what I could do not only for myself, but my family later on down the road. Jamil, walk us through the game on Saturday. It uh, looked like uh, maybe you guys were putting in some tough spots early by the offense, and then kind of Arizona State looked like they had a game plan with some new new dimensions that maybe they could try to show you. Then at the end of the game, the rush came on, and you guys kind of put it away. Walk us through Saturday's game for the defense. Uh, yeah, it was just all about finishing for us. Um, we go by the mantra, the longer we go, the better we get. Um, and obviously we face some adversity, but, I mean, that's that's any game. I mean, even the Stanford game, from the outside looking in, it looked perfect, but trust and believe it wasn't. Um, it's always going to be ebbs and flows throughout any game, whether it's a perfect game or the defense did horrible or whatever um, the outside you know person can say. But, I mean, yeah, we, we knew that going in it was going to be ups and downs. For us, it was just about getting better as the game went on. Um, I think one you know big point that Coach Riley even touched on was we just got to do a better job at tackling. Yep. Because um, when we did, I mean, it was I mean we, we we took people down. We didn't focus on it as much. It was an issue. So um, just little things like that. Just focusing on the little things and taking the punches and and you know taking them for what they're worth. Jamil, you're going you're coming from Georgia State, and that's a lot of schools that missed out on you. Um, if you're going to a school at that level, what give, give us more of your or your story of how you landed there, and uh, maybe the chip on your shoulder that exists from uh, from from coming from Georgia State. Oh, um, I mean, it's I mean, it's, it's just about where you want to start. I mean, um, <laughs> um, I mean, I guess you can go ahead back. I mean, I tore my ACL and my, going into my junior year of high school, which I mean, if you know, that's probably the most most important year of recruitment um, um, when you're going into your junior year of high school. So, just having that injury set me back, and in, in, in some ways, it took away a lot of offers uh, on the quarterback side of things. Um, which is funny, Dan Mullen was was my guy going in, you know, going into my junior year. Um, I think he was getting ready to move over to Florida, and I was gonna, you know, try to flip my, you know, I guess not really verbal commitment at the time, but what I was gonna be a verbal commitment to Mississippi State, I was gonna flip to Florida. So um, it definitely was gonna get interesting, but I think you know God just threw that in there to see, you know, how can He adapt, and that's just that's how I am. I've been adapting my whole life. Um, you know, from when I was little up until now. So, like I said, it's a lot of it's a lot of things I could touch on as far as my story. But um, well, yeah. you were a quarterback. I mean, start there. I think yeah. you just sort of dropped that in. I'm not sure yeah, everyone you know, knows that about you. Know, QB. You. you were a quarterback recruited by Vanderbilt. You know, go, going to be an SEC quarterback. Now you're yeah. sitting here as a as a rush linebacker. It's, at some point, you know, there had to be a major inflection point there for you at choosing yeah. defense. No, it, it was. It was. Um, you know, I, I, I crossed a lot of. I crossed a lot of roads and, you know, a lot of tough decisions and, you know, uh, this thing happened and that thing happened. And then obviously we just came to a decision, a mutual decision, me and Coach Elliott at Georgia State. And he just, you know, he, he stressed to me um, that, you know, he believed in my abilities outside of quarterback, but just as a football player in general. And I respect him for that to this day because, um, honestly, if it wasn't for him having that talk with me, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now, um, you know, as early as I am. But obviously we had that talk. And, you know, I think at the time he wanted me to uh, – you know, play like running back and things like that. But I think, you know, I was like, hey, why not? Let's play defense. Because the last time I played defense was when I was like seven. So <laughs> I was like, let's try it. So now I'm on my 
third year in the defense now. So, talk about your coach a little bit, but Roy Manning Jr. Obviously, one of the best dressed guys in football, but uh, he's putting hey, together putting together. Don't quite, tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> he knows putting together quite a group uh, with you guys. Romello Height had a game. Young Braylon Shelby looked like he started the season off strong. What what, what makes him such a great coach? Man, Coach Manning just um, he reminds me of my parents in a way. Like, you know, the minute you think that you know you you are you know, doing something super special, he kind of, like, brings you back to reality. He kind of, like, humbles you a little bit. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you need that as, as a player. Um, I think, you know, Angel Reese touched on it when she talked about her coach after the championship game. She said the most important thing about her coach is she still humbles them. Like, she tells them where they need to get better. She tells them. He tells us all the time, like, we're not that sweet. Yeah. You know, just because we do that. Like, he just told us today, like, yeah, we had a game on Saturday, but that was on Saturday. Like, we got to come back and – um, bounce back and do it again, you know, do it even better this upcoming Saturday. So he, he always keeps us on our toes, um, and I appreciate that about him. You see in the transfer portal, obviously, for a guy like yourself, it, it's a it's an opportunity to, to get more exposure and level up schools and whatnot, and, and you've made the most of it. You do see some guys, though, that are star players at the school that they're in, and they, they, they leverage that to, to level up, and then they don't have a role at their new home. That obviously is not your case. You've carved out a role for you there. How have you made that jump so successfully when maybe other guys, you know, their role diminishes when they take that step up? Uh, it's just all about adapting. I think, you know, for me, it's like, um, I, like you mentioned that chip on my shoulder earlier, and, you know, it's just like every time I get a chance to talk to my mom and my dad, it's like, okay, that's what I'm here for. Like, I'm not really here for, um, you know, any type of, like, I, I have no time to waste. So it's just, I, I know I have that, like, that clock ticking in my head. Um, so I, I just, I, I approach the game that way. You know, I, I talked to the defense the other day about just appreciating the moment and not really just saying that we appreciate it, but, like, showing that we appreciate it by how we play. Mm. And um, I just, you know, I just translate that through my play. Like, you know, the best way to show God that you're grateful is to, you know, play with your hair on fire. And then, obviously, all the good things that happen. Um, obviously, the ups and downs that happen. But you do that, you know, there's no telling what will happen. As a former QB, uh, what, do you, what do you admire about the way Caleb plays a position? What, what, can, what can he do? Like, <laughs> um, Caleb is Caleb. Um, that's my guy. It's been, it's been cool to be here and be around him and, you know, see how he operates and um, see that even outside of what he does on the field, he's still, like, he probably may be – one of the goofiest people on the team, um, besides, you know, probably myself or, you know, maybe uh, Kalen or maybe some of them other guys. But, no, Caleb is – he's a special guy, man. I mean, as far as quarterback, I mean, obviously he's, you know, it's not even arguably he's the best in college right now. And to be honest, he – he may be better than some of the guys in the pros, but you know that's that's a conversation for another day. Yeah. What's the uh, what's you got an early start on Saturday? Any uh, what's the routine when you got to wake up and get it going? Is it lunch food or breakfast food? Breakfast. I breakfast. Can, I can't jump like. All right. <laughs> but I'm a but see I'm a breakfast. Steak and eggs. Well, see I don't do I, I've never eaten beef, so uh, it's for me it's probably gonna be like some oatmeal or like some eggs or something. Um, but definitely got to get like I can't do coffee because my stomach's gonna be tore up. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't even do it, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it just um, for me, it just reminds me of uh, Pop Warner football, like them early stars. Yep. You know, so it's kind of taking me back to that. Was, oranges at halftime. Yeah, oranges at halftime. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's gonna be cool. I mean, Coach Riley, I don't know if he mentioned it, but I mean, we we've we've had a lot of early practice starts. So, I mean, an early game time start, it's nothing. Let's let's do it. Can't wait. Jamil Muhammad will be out there on Saturday as USC takes on Colorado in Boulder. When you've got good beer and good vibes, it's all Buena. Stone Buena Vesa Salt and Lime Lager is Baja inspired and imported from San Diego, located near you at fine.stonebrewing.com. All right, we come back. We're going to get to our football roundtable. This is Trojans Live.
It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. I got it, Jay. I figured it out. Thanks. That's why on that. Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. Covering the Trojans on the field. Caleb keeps it, rolls right, steps up, steps back, steps forward. Stop moving. Is damn near impossible. Luckily, they do it from behind the mic. It's, 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 it's tro 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 Trojans Live on your home for Trojans football. AM 790 KABC. Welcome back to Trojans Live. The women's spotlight is brought to you by Sprouts Farmers Market. Open seven days a week. Visit your neighborhood Sprouts for good for you groceries and great prices on the freshest produce. Spotlighted home this week is on USC women's volleyball. They have a couple of matches at the Galen Center Friday night against Utah and then on Sunday against Colorado. It's a one o'clock start on Sunday and that is their pink match. So the first 300 fans in attendance will receive pink socks. They're coming off a uh, sweep of Oregon State in a dramatic five set win at UCLA. So women's volleyball there we go. on the rise. No uh, Max Brown uh, women's volleyball next, uh, breakdown? I was looking forward to this guest. Next <laughs> week we will have uh, the head coach, we expect to have the head coach Brad Keller on Trojans Live so Max can save go. all his volleyball takes. Got him ready. I'm interested in some of you guys' football takes if you don't Ooh. mind. Uh, we were like, oh, we would like a game where we have something to talk about. So they gave us a game that gave us a few things to talk about. Uh, Max, I heard all of uh, Sean's takes on, on Saturday night uh, during the broadcast. So what was your takeaway watching it and then and watching the film? Yeah, I couldn't help but walk away feeling like I feel like Lincoln's glad they had that kind of test. And he definitely confirmed that uh, tonight because going into the season, my concern with this schedule was that it's very backloaded. And there was a real scenario where we went through the first six weeks, five weeks of the season and did not have a test. And that's great to get wins, but I don't think that's great for building a team. And I think in a weird way, this punch in the mouth was was great. And it was I was glad it, in, it happened at Arizona State and not on the road at Colorado where that snowball effect could have gone a different way. So I, I thought, it, you know, definitely things to clean up, but you see the explosiveness still. You see the talent still. And I think this is a byproduct of, like Lincoln said, being USC and going on the road to a team that's the last time they're going to play USC. And it's funny. One thing that he was sort of alluding to, too, which I just I think that in the analytics era gets really lost is that the games are played by human beings yep. and it do doesn't matter what the point spread is or, or what the statistical matchup is like you still have to play to your best and the human beings that were coming off the loss and were way up for the game at home in a sold out place and a, you know this could make our whole season they were up for it and it, I, it just felt it at times like as you mentioned the, the way the schedule is loaded it's hard to blow out six t teams in a row. The human condition doesn't necessarily let you just like hammer people week in and week out that you're better than. It just sort of felt like one of these was going to happen in the beginning of the season. So I'm not like stunned. I also don't Sean, necessarily think it's indicative of, oh, everything the rest of the season. I would be stunned if we're sitting at the end of the season going, that Arizona State game, that that was indicative of, of, <laughs> of but we won't even be talking about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I I give credit to Arizona State, uh, Coach Dillingham. You know, they took they took one on the chin, like we said, about with Colorado is, you know, you take one like that, and then he had a week to kind of figure out, okay, what am I going to do? Let's reset. We, uh, we got a quarterback. He has this skill set. Uh, we don't have an offensive line. Let's get the ball to the outside. Try to attack him from the outside. Don't let him rush. And then when they started to get behind, you see where they had to drop back and that's where I thought you know the defense was able to get home but credit their, their good game plan but I also think like those kind of games like that that you find out who your guys Lincoln Riley found out you know about his guys he found out about his rush ends definitely he found out you know about Brendan Rice might be maybe maybe he's the number one or you know you just kind of in those moments that's who you turn to all right who are my guys where I'm going to count on that rotation stuff is nice but when <laughs> when it's time yeah. when, when we were in the fourth quarter up by one score uh who, who who's playing right now yeah, Lincoln Riley also said after the game that, you know, as good as some of the stats were, and he mentioned nine yards per play, and J.J. mentioned in our post game 500 you know, plus yards of offense, you know, those are pretty actually eye-popping stats. But he, he did mention as a head coach, as a play caller, he does sort of go by the feel of the game, and it felt like a grind. I, I, I thought in particular, Max, that Arizona State was the first team this season in a while that had done a really nice job in the scramble situations. They got beat late finally on the, on the second Brendan Rice touchdown in a scramble situation. Situation, but they could have had a couple picks and scramble spots that that, that that coach alluded to. And just in general, 
Caleb wasn't out there sort of freewheeling. It was it was hard-earned yards throughout the game, even though they got a lot of yards. Yeah, and I think some of that um, speaks to explosive plays and the importance of that just on any team throughout the game. And the flip side is also true where there were some layups that Caleb had that they're incomplete passes and you kind of survive in advance if you're Arizona State. And I'm sure teams look at that film saying, to your point, we got to be great in the scramble drills. But two, hey, maybe we don't be fearful of these receivers and take our chances on the, on the outside and in, in man coverage and say, maybe we strike it right one of these nights where they're not exactly on all their stuff, Caleb and his receivers, and we're able to survive on the outside. I, like, I could see a, a defensive coordinator taking that mindset uh, moving forward facing this USC offense. Marshawn Lloyd is a baller. Yeah, That's what I took away from that game. From these last two games, I mean, uh, there's not enough touches this guy can get. And, uh, you know, I know we like to throw the ball and get it spread around. And I know part of that is that's why this running game is successful as it is because teams are so wary of what we have in those I weapons. I was going to say – Caleb's a baller. Yeah, of course. And, and wouldn't any opponent rather of course. the ball not be yeah, in his yeah. hands? If you're defensively, you have to stop someone first. You, you're, you're focused on Caleb. But Marshawn Lloyd, man, I can't get, a, get enough touches for that kid because he's special. He, he moves different. You can see uh, just as a defender how hard it is to, to tackle that guy. There's a lot of fan anxiety uh, about the defense. And, and, and Coach mentioned the tackling and, and was very clear with us post game and then and reiterated it here. With that said, when the game felt tight, I thought that's when they were at their best. You know, they, they clearly had a conversation at halftime because they made many more plays in the second half. All the sacks were in the second half, the turnovers. But there were like two or three possessions there where the offense sputtered and was like, hey, Arizona State, you got the ball and a chance to take the lead. And then who knows when, if they had done that, if they had gotten over that hump, what that crowd would have been like, what that, that hole would have turned into. And the defense didn't let that happen. They weren't perfect. You know, the, the tackling is certainly something that, 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 that needs to be addressed. But – they kind of made the plays when they needed to when the offense wasn't quite putting the finishing touches on, on that game. Yeah, for sure. I thought the turnovers were huge in the game. Obviously, think about Kalen Bullock's interception, the, the sack caused fumble. Uh, from Solomon Bird, uh, but I, you know there were there were some drives that were concerning. I thought you know that I thought the big play, you know your offense sent you up, you know inside, and you hope you, your defense can come out and sudden change, and they weren't able to do it. Had a bust, they score early. Okay, let's that one's on the offense, and then you don't tackle uh, Sat, uh, Scatab Scatabo Scatabo on yeah, the sideline. Heck of a game. He, he breaks game. two tackles. Okay, those two plays, you give those up. But the the, the, the drives that were concerning is when they pushed it down the field a little bit, and they, they felt comfortable in their, those two drives where they scored. Scored. So if I if I'm a, I'm a you know a critic of this defense. It was really those two drives, Max, that were that were concerning as opposed to the actual score of 28. I think. Yeah, and we challenged Kalen Bullock. Uh, Sua did at least last time I was on the pregame show with you guys, and so for him to show up in that playmaker role like we thought he'd be, I thought that was a great sign. I just, I mean, I was obviously watching the game on my couch, and it it was just. I had the sense when they did a shot like late in the third quarter on Mason Cobb when the game was still close. And I just had the feeling like that's the first time he's been in a USC uniform where it probably hasn't feel, felt like scrimmage energy. We're like, oh, it's my series, and then I'm going to be out the next time or out the next time. Like, no, he's in there to be the leader, to get a stop. And I just have a feeling that we walk away from that game with a defense that's much more bonded after that challenge. And hopefully they they take it take that over and do a elite passing attack uh, in in, uh, in Boulder. Yeah, we'll get to that next. Don't wait until game time to plan for retirement. Open your free iTrust Capital account today and get your crypto IRA. iTrust Capital is the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. And if you want the inside scoop on this game and all things Trojans, be sure to sign up for the three torches presented by Smart and Final. It's a free newsletter that'll hit your email inbox three times a week with game info, player insights, and more. Go to usctrojans.com slash three torches and sign up. We will preview that Boulder game next on Trojans Live.
Looking for the play of the day? That's easy. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT, the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention, Ontario International Airport has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 20 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. Covering all things SC. Touchdown, USC! It's Trojans Live on your home for Trojans football. AM 790 KABC. Monster Energy, the official energy drink of USC. Unleash the beast. How many monsters are you taking down on Saturday morning, Sean? Ooh, yeah. Don't overdo it. I'm going to get heavy. Be disciplined, Sean. I'm going to be jittering. I'm going to be jittering on that one. That's an early start for me. We'll get get it going, though, though, monster time. Fight on Trojans and fly on with ONT. Ontario International Airport is a proud sponsor of our USC Trojans. Visit SoCalSoEasy.com to book your journey through ONT today. Get on that flight from Ontario. Head to Denver. Check out USC versus Colorado. If you can get a ticket, it's going to be a sellout it's probably been a sellout for weeks uh it's the game that everyone's watching uh so i I don't think the trojans despite the start time altitude all the other nonsense we talk about will have any issues tuning it up for this one yeah hard to not get your engines revving for this one i know that might have been their excuse last week you know we're kind of uh or hum into the arizona state game who just got you know shut out for the fresno state there's no excuse this weekend especially with a with an opponent who like i said just took one on the chin they just got popped you know they're gonna have a a heck of a week of practice with coach prime and and be and be ready to go at home all white jersey it's gonna be a and i'm sure this team is is focused on that right now yeah, I feel like for me, obviously, if we win all our games, we're going to be just fine from a from a CFP conversation and a conference championship conversation. But it feels like all those teams in the top 10 around us have had their national moment so far this season. And we haven't. I know we've had, you know, the Stanford game, which was good. But ASU was late at night. And obviously, everyone knows about Caleb and knows about Lincoln. But it feels like this is the opportunity similar to what Oregon had last week. Exactly. is like that's Oregon's coming out party. And now everyone across the country is talking about how Oregon's a legitimate contender. It feels like this is the opportunity if we go in there and take care of business for now us to get back in that uh in that uh conversation so to speak well the other thing is what i said from the start that i ultimately think will define this season are these incredible quarterback battles and and showdowns that are coming and they just hadn't come yet there was four weeks that drew pine played played pretty well this week but it starts now and even you know even with Colorado and Arizona maybe not the same uh as some of these other teams but good at the quarterback spot this secondary is going to get tested Shador Sanders is a player Jaden Delora next week is a player and on and on we go and so while the secondary hasn't necessarily been the story for USC I I do think they sort of are going forward and obviously the pass rush plays a a major role in that but this will be a huge test for them yeah quarterback play Shador Sanders is is a real deal back there he can set up and, and throw it and wing it whereas Drew Pine not the same kind of quarterback we didn't have to really worry about him pressing the field so I think you know the game plan for Colorado might be a similar one they saw where Drew Pine could get the ball out not wait because the offensive line Colorado has really struggled so our our, our front should get there but I think if he makes quick decisions that's where you put the cornerbacks in in tough parts where they got to be tighter and they got to be more succinct than they have been I think in, in previous games. The offensive line for Colorado is a struggle. They got absolutely exposed in Eugene last week. I'm sure that's the biggest concern for for Dion. And I think for Alex Grinch, he'll have a decision on his hands in that does he want to just trust the front four and get after him and play straight up and kind of have a mindset of, hey, Shadur, just you, you got to beat us? Or are we going to see, which we have seen from Alex Grinch over the past couple of years, of dialing up exotic pressures and bringing different things? And that's great when they get home, but it's also a recipe for – if you if if, if is on the on the on the get right hooked. page at night, you can get the ball out quickly and, and find open receivers. So interested to see what Alex Grinch does. But a guy like Jamil Muhammad, we were talking about R- Romelo Height. Those are the guys that should be licking their chops going into this game. Yeah, I, I thought watching that Oregon Colorado game that uh, on the other side of the football, Oregon got the ball out very quickly. Uh, Bucky Irving ran very hard and was breaking a lot of tackles. But but Bo Nix. His stats were—he was so accurate because I mean he was just getting it on the perimeter and and they were having so much success. Yeah, and that's why it's uh, exciting to have you know a back now that's a legitimate passing uh, passing threat. But I think there's that. There's all the slot receivers we have. I could see Lincoln doing some creative stuff in the short game, a short quick uh, quick pass game this week. Yeah, and Bo Nix took advantage with his uh, legs as well. I thought you know Caleb might be able to press that issue a little bit more this week and in, in that zone read game and take off on a couple. I didn't ask Coach about the altitude because I feel like coaches get bored of that question, but I'll ask you guys as former players, did it ever bother you? Um, It takes a 
couple hours to get used to it. I think I would get like a headache and drink a Gatorade and then I'd... But in the game, you didn't feel like you had less oxygen? It's, no, not a thing you're worried about. I was I was always sucking wind as a big fella. <laughs> <laughs> Third play of the game, coach! I wasn't running much either, so I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, never an issue for me. Colorado was one of the coldest games I've ever played in college. That in Saturday. Pullman, so good thing we got them in September. That's That'll be nice. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely beautiful on Saturday. Early start, I, I think, is interesting. Uh, USC experienced it a couple years ago, but it was during that COVID season, so it was without fans. But that, that season opener at the Coliseum was actually at 9 a.m. Uh, but 10 a.m., yeah, fun, fun for us old guys. I'll be ready to go. And uh, yeah, as Max said, you know, it's the first spotlight game really for USC, and, and I would expect the, the TV ratings to reflect that and the, the atmosphere to reflect that. And, and then, you know, we sort of go from here, guys. I mean, this is just laid out and I think there's a lot of like whoa it's going to be hard to go 12 and 0 as you said with this schedule but you know what maybe you don't have to go 12 and 0 because the schedule is so good I mean this is it's what it's all about I mean, certainly as a fan I, I think you'd rather play games where they're exciting and, and fun against really good teams instead of just beating a bunch of people up for sure I mean we went into the last game kind of like oh, well here we go Arizona State let's see what this is and it turned into a, a much more exciting game than we thought but it's just not as it doesn't seem as fun as a player as, as a coach when you're you're going to these games that don't now when these games mean something and it's early in the morning your energy's way up I mean this is uh, this, this is not gonna be this is gonna be a ton of fun uh just for me as just calling the game I can't imagine being a player in this game prime time game getting up early getting the juices going it's gonna be beautiful I mean this is this is the kind of stuff you play college football and football in general for this USC offense has been elite to start games, first possessions, getting seven points. Keep an eye on that on this game because I think it's important to start fast, put the pressure on Colorado. If Colorado puts the pressure on us and the crowd starts getting involved, they start getting some confidence back home, we might have ourselves a, a, a ball game. Trojans Live is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. We're going to wrap it up with our over-under next. Taking you inside the huddle. All right, 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 right. From the comfort of your car. It's Trojans Live on your home for Trojans football. AM 790 KABC. One final segment of Trojans Live on a Monday. The birthday, a holiday here. It's the official birthday of Gia Lara as our producer. Hi, Gia. Yeah, okay, we're going to pan over. Birthday. Gia loves being on camera Let's go. whenever possible. Let's just yeah, fire that thing over so Gia can wave <laughs> to the crowd. Oh, no, too slow. Too slow on the pan. We do have to get to our over-under presented by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC Athletics. Uh, you guys mentioned it. Uh, Colorado has given up 23 sacks. That is the second most in the nation. USC has 16 sacks. That is the third most in the nation. So USC strength against uh, – 
uh, perceived weakness for Colorado. Uh, over under four and a half sacks that USC has on Saturday. USC's defense. Four and a half seems low to me. Um, I'm going to go. Well, the way I did it, Sean, is I did the math, and they've had 16 sacks in four games. So that's how many sacks per game? Mm -hmm. That's four. There you go. So I went a, a tick up. All right. Ooh, there you go. A little <laughs> tick up. Tick up from, from the average. Go for it. You go first. Uh, I'm Four, going 45 seconds, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going under. I just think there's so much chatter around uh, the sacks that they've taken that Game they're. Japan will not let it. Yeah, it'll get it'll the be, ball out. Get the ball out. There you go. I'll go over then just to make it fun. What about you, Jordan? I'm going to go over. I mean, I do think that, uh, you know, Sanders does hold the ball, too, which I think is part of, of, of what they put. A, you know, he's doing a lot for them in yeah. the games that I've watched, and he's been fantastic, and I think that he sort of has that ability. I mean, Caleb takes some sacks that. You know, even though he's so mobile, he takes them because he trusts himself to hold the ball. And if you take a couple sacks, it's worth it for the playmaking that comes along with it. Well, thank you to everyone involved tonight. Trojans Live is a production of USC Sports Properties and Playfly Sports. Drew DeHart, Rick Cutler, our, our team behind the scenes, and the, the aforementioned GLRS as well. Thanks to our crew. Follow us on YouTube, and we will see you early on Saturday. Fight on. You can't spell victorious without you. S C. Fourth and nine. This is the ball game. Takes the snap. Steps up in the pocket. Throws for the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, USC. Trojans Live was presented by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Make sure to check back in next Monday night at 7 for more Trojans Live. Exclusively on your home for all things Trojan, AM 790 KABC. And follow us on the USC Trojan Media Network. Trojans Live is an exclusive presentation of Play Fly Sports on AM 790 KABC and the USC Trojan Media Network.